In this video, we will discuss about symbol ferron, and you will learn about definition, types, causes, symptoms, signs, complications and treatment. What is symbol ferron? The adhesion or attachment of palpebral and bulbar conjunctiva is called symbol ferron. In this figure, this portion is palpebral conjunctiva and this portion is bulbar conjunctiva. When these two portions adhere or attach with each other, then it's called symbol ferron. What are the types of symbol ferron? Depending on area of adhesion, symbol ferron can be divided into three types. One, anterior symbol ferron. When adhesions limited to the anterior part of the eye. Two, posterior symbol ferron. When adhesions extend to the phonics of the eye. 3. Total symbol ferron When adhesions involve the entire eyelid What are the causes of symbol ferron? 1. Thermal or chemical burns When the conjunctiva is damaged by heat or chemicals, the resulting inflammation and tissue loss create raw surfaces. During the healing process, these surfaces stick together, forming fibrous adhesions. 2. Membranous conjunctivitis In membranous conjunctivitis, a fibrin-rich exudate forms on the conjunctiva. As the inflammation subsides, the healing raw areas may adhere to each other, causing symbol ferron. 3. Injuries Trauma creates open wounds on the conjunctiva. If these raw surfaces are not properly managed, they may heal together, resulting in adhesions. 4. Conjunctival ulcerations Ulcers expose the deeper layers of the conjunctiva. During healing, these exposed surfaces may fuse with the adjacent conjunctiva or cornea, leading to adhesion. 5. Ocular pemphigus Ocular pemphigus causes blisters and erosions on the conjunctiva. As these lesions heal, the scar tissue often binds the eyelid to the eyeball, forming symbol ferron. 6. Stevens-Johnson syndrome It causes widespread conjunctival inflammation, blistering, and raw surfaces. The healing process often results in adhesions between the conjunctiva and the eyelid. What are the clinical features of symbol ferron? 1. Difficulty in lid movements. This happens because the adhesions between the conjunctiva restrict the normal sliding motion of the eyelids, making them less flexible and functional. 2. Diplopia or double vision. Patients may experience diplopia or double vision due to restricted ocular motility. The adhesions limit the free movement of the eyeball, causing misalignment and difficulty in focusing on a single image. 3. Lagophthalmos Lagophthalmos is inability to close the eyelids completely. This occurs when adhesions prevent the lids from sealing shut, leaving the eye exposed even during sleep. 4. Cosmetic disfigurement The adhesions can alter the normal contour and symmetry of the eye, impacting the patient's appearance and self-esteem. What are the complications of symbol ferron? 1. Dryness of the eye. The inability to close the lids fully leads to inadequate tear distribution, leaving the eye vulnerable to dryness. 2. Thickening and keratinization. With prolonged exposure, the conjunctiva undergoes thickening and keratinization. This transformation reduces its protective and lubricating functions, further aggravating discomfort and dryness. 3. Exposure keratitis. Symbol ferron lead to unable to close the eye completely that exposed the cornea. The exposed cornea becomes prone to irritation and infection, leading to painful corneal ulcer or exposure keratitis. What is the treatment of symbol ferron? 1. Prevention adhesion. It can be done in two ways. A. Sweeping a glass rod coated with ointment. Prevention begins with sweeping a glass rod coated with ointment around the upper and lower furnaces. 
This ensures the areas are packed with ointment to prevent adhesions. The procedure should be repeated several times a day, depending on the severity of the condition. B. Fitting a scleral contact shell. Another preventive measure is fitting a scleral contact shell. This separates the two mucosal surfaces, stopping them from adhering to each other. 2. Treatment of established cymbalferon. When cymbalferon is already established, treatment depends on the extent of the adhesions. A. Small adhesion. If there is only a small adhesion, it can be resolved by a simple excision. B. Extensive adhesions. For extensive adhesions, a more radical approach is required. This involves excising the scarred conjunctival tissue and performing a mucous membrane graft to cover the exposed area. The mucous membrane can be sourced from the upper phonix of the opposite eye or the buccal mucosa. 3. Preventing recurrence of adhesions. Prevention of recurrence of adhesion includes A. Therapeutic contact lenses or scleral shells. After treatment, therapeutic contact lenses or scleral shells must be worn for at least 6 weeks to prevent adhesions from reforming. B. High doses of steroids. Additionally, high doses of steroids, both local and systemic, are essential. These reduce the formation of excessive granulation tissue, further minimizing the risk of recurrence. Subscribe Smart Optometry for more videos like this. Stay with Smart Optometry and study optometry smartly.